Oh wow. No shadows for a change. Oh wait. That's why. Hello folks. Welcome again to the Hobo and well one day his girlfriend. Wrestling show. I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. And this is probably gonna be a fairly quick show. Because I have to get to the gym because I well I have to wake up tomorrow morning, so I can't be out all night doing this. Um well, oh, I have stuff to do tomorrow, too. Yep. Unfortunately, life sometimes takes precedence over hobbies. This is my hobby until I get monetized again. I'd like to thank all those subscribers. Um, I'm getting pretty close to the 4,000 viewing hours. I'm still, I think, about 766 subscribers away from even nearly being monetized. So we'll see how that goes. But again, there's still Triple Mania to come. One of my best shows yet. A um, couple things for next month. 29th, I think, is the AEW pay-per-view. I won't be live streaming that. I might watch that, give, give you my reactions to that, depending on work. Um, Valentine's Day. Oh, I have to do that too. Oh, and I found out some odd news. Princess Kimberly, Princess Kimberly, my princess, Kimberly has actually got married. Um, congratulations. Uh, she got married to I think Wentz of the Rascals. Kind of made me a little bit sad. One less fantasy, but enough about that. Um, Valentine's Day, there will be a video put up. It's the all woman special because because that one. Goes out to all the ladies. I am going to make Princess Kimberly because, well, I already made her before I found out said news. So, oh, well. And I think it's also because going to the wrestling events, I did get my sister a Princess Kimberly shirt. Actually, it was a really good design. You can check that out at ProWrestlingTees.com. Um, yeah, that's her free plug. And eventually, I'll be getting my new Macho Man shirt. Oh, so looking forward to that. But enough about that stuff. No more free plugs. Let's talk about some AEW. Let's, again, uh, no, no, no more free plugs. Let me stretch a little bit. But with AEW, they've kind of settled into a groove, and now I'm getting semi-concerned that they're going to go the way of WWE because it starts off, even though it was, it was really good. It's a Mox promo. John Moxley, he's so good. Promos, especially when he's like given like like really like a, just a bullet point list to do versus script. Of course, Chris Jericho shows up. So good. And he shows up. It's so hard for Chris Jericho really to be healed because everyone sings his music. Of course he called Cleveland a bunch of idiots. Which is what Cleveland is. Um, and then, question to everyone out there. Is the Inner Circle becoming the Bullet Club? So Bullet Club, I think they actually changed logos. Which isn't good, because the Bullet Club logo is actually amazing. And, of course, uh, what happened to this? It's like, yeah. Mox says, you know what? It's, it's not five on one. It's one against five. Uh, and then the inner circle says, well, we have, we brought some, some backup, so it's going to be not one against five. <laughs> it's going to be one against ten. And they brought out a bunch of Santana and Ortiz lookalike enhancement talents. And, oh yeah, there was a one security guy. I don't know if he's there at every wrestling match. I swear I remember him from ECW. He's a big guy. Every so often he is in WWE. He's a big guy. He has the mustache. I, I swear he was from ECW, though. Um, so I'm curious if this is going to be MVE, not OVE. Moxley versus everyone, not Ohio versus everyone. We'll see. So it starts off. Um, so that was pretty cool. And JR. JR is so funny. Uh, there was a little promo with MJF. MJF 
obviously bought the services of the Butcher, the Blade, and the Bunny just to beat up people. Yeah, when you see that envelope full of cash, you know, that's a payoff to someone. And then JR gets the names wrong. That's, he's JR is just, well, he's just JR. I don't think he cares anymore. He's like, I want to talk about my barbecue sauce, beans. And as long as I get my check in the mail, we're all hunky dory. Uh, so, match starts off Young Bucks versus the Butcher of the Blade. And of course, the bunny's there. Elia is looking a little bit. She kind of has that little midriff shirt. She looks kind of naughty. Naughty Allie is probably a good Allie. I wonder if she's married. I don't know. I'll have to do research. Research should be done tonight. After I apply for a job I saw. Because that's always a good thing. Uh, so it starts off the butcher is so strong he just tosses Matt Jackson around. I always get Matt and Nick always confused. But uh, the Bucks need to double team the Butcher. Uh, the Blade, again, they're kind of falling, falling into this WWE tag team trap. The smaller person always gets beat up. The Blade, again, very systematically gets beat up by the Young Bucks. The tag team work by the Young Bucks is amazing, though. I'll tell you what, even the, even the Butcher and the Blade, they're really darn good, too. Uh, eventually, again, the, the fast pace of the Young Bucks until the Butcher comes in. Clubs both of them, double clotheslines. Again, he's a bigger guy. He's going he's gonna to have a much more deliberate pace. The Young Bucks, well, they're not so young anymore, but they can still carry on a very fast-paced match. And that's going to lead a little bit to next week's show, which I forget. Will I actually be able to see that? Maybe. I forget. Let's see here. Oh, because I know I wrote down my schedule. Here, or am I going to be watching it Thursday too? Oh no, I will be watching. Oh well, yeah, that was a thought, I guess. Yeah, that may. Whoa, why am I going to the bank? Yep, I have a lot, I have a lot to do next week. I just really wait a second. I have a lot to do this week. But enough about that. Um, oh, yeah, I have to let my dad know about it. Point spread. San Francisco is, I think, point and a half underdogs. I have San Francisco. I get a point and a half. Whatever that means. Uh, but wait a second. I digress from being a gambling degenerate to being talking about wrestling. So let's get back to pro wrestling. The bunny eventually does yank. Nick Jackson off the mat. It's good to see her getting someone involved. She has to get more involved, though. She's going to be anything meaningful. Uh, a little bit more towards the way of... Um, oh, what's her face? Penelope Ford. That's it. It's Penelope Ford, will, she'll take a bump. And she'll do wrestling. Uh, Allie's wrestled before, so she should be able to do something, especially with the Young Bucks. Young Bucks have so much experience. Again, probably one of the best matches ever by the Young Bucks was Young Bucks. Taking on, because they were heels, taking on Candice LeRae and Joey Ryan. Amazing. Oh. Like, that actually introduced me to Joey Ryan and Candice LeRae and the Young Bucks, I think, over in Pro Wrestling Gorilla. Uh, Matt, again, he, had a, he, he, he jumped over the ref to make the save. That was pretty athletic. Then they did the slice spread. I forget. I don't know if it's slice spread. I, wouldn't, I, always, I need to know. Difference between slice, maybe it's with a leg split. Yeah, I guess it's sliced bread. Uh, Matt cleans house once he gets tagged in, which is pretty cool. Uh, then there was the. The draping sent on. That looked nasty. Uh, they hung. The ja uh, I, think, uh, I forget. Jackson number one had. Blade draped from the second rope. Jackson number two, only way I know how to describe him though, did a senton from the top rope onto him. It was a super kick party then. And then eventually there was a Meltzer driver. And the Young Bucks won the match. I'll tell you what, this was a really good, really good start. 
bunny she lost yours so, so, someone took the bunny's ears or she was so upset she, she threw her somewhere but that's not enough the butcher just beats up people again the jacksons won but they get beat up by the butcher the blade and the bunny gets her i think she got like a kick in or something just went eh, 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 eh. Uh, so then eventually kenny omega comes in makes the save and then hangman adam page he, he walks in with a beer gives the beer to matt jackson said okay buckshot lariat he, he took his beer and said yep you're welcome but yeah this is a fun match though this is Surf and turf match. And then it was kind of pretty full. Uh, let's see. Here. There were only a couple of promos. Oh, this match has gone off though. AEW has to figure out their women's division. Because this match. And uh, it was Big Swole versus Nile Rose. I think no one cared about this. Um, Swole had some weak looking kicks. It was like, eh, 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 eh. It looked like a slap fight. I know it's supposed to be impactful, but when it literally looks like you're doing that, it's, it's, it's terrible. Um, and then Nyla Rose, like, she like ducked. Clothesline, like, she just went back and like one Mississippi, two Mississippi. Like, like a few three seconds later, the clothesline comes in. It's like, ooh, she has to work on timing a lot. I don't know, it might be Ring Ross, maybe it might be one, it might be both of them. They didn't have time, they're like, okay, two women go in there. Who knows? Uh, the shoulder tackle, big swole again, has to realize that Nile Rose is the bigger of the two, didn't work. And, and, and oh my god, was this a terrible match? Uh, Big Swole. She stole the hobo choke, though. It's not the draping anything. It's actually a, it's actually a guillotine choke. It's an arm in guillotine choke. It's the hobo choke used by the one, the only hobo Tom. The Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. That's how he finishes many opponents. Well, he used to. Until now. Broken Tom has the belt. Maybe we'll see Broken Tom show up here on this show one day. My many nemesis is between him, El, Ho El Vagabundo Dos Hobo Cuatro Cinco, and a host of others. And hopefully one day, hopefully for Triple Mini, I'll, I'll have a guest. That would be good. Get, get El Sicario to show up. That would be pretty cool. And uh, then Big Swole hit a wheelbarrow. Flatliner, which actually looked pretty good. Then Nyla Rose did whatever her driver was. Just, it just looked bad. The timing was off. It looked fake. They were like missing drop kicks left and right. It's one thing to knock a guy out. I understand that. But when I wrestled, I like to feel contact. So I'm like, dude, just, just like clothesline me. Just, just clothesline me here, not like take my head off. Because that's not good. And this isn't good either. But that's okay. I'm going to work through it, I hope. Yeah, because this computer is getting a little old now. Um, so, I'll, there was some guy in a GCW shirt. It's always funny. I think it's neat that they actually allow. The heck's all this stuff? They actually allow um, wrestling shirts from other companies. I know to start off, WWE didn't like AEW shirts. They they kind of tranquilo it a little bit. AEW doesn't care. New Japan doesn't care. I think that's really it. But this match, eh, it was a piece of toast. And who was it? When did that happen? That was just later. 
Then the next match, we had Kip Sabian with Penelope Forte on Cody Rhodes with Arn Anderson in his corner. <laughs> it's just funny. Arn Anderson has has this kind of like script. It's like it actually does look like football plays. You can tell him it's like okay. It's like you know what? Yeah, honestly, listen, Arn Anderson, you just have to figure out. Because I'll tell you what, Andy Reid is the biggest loser that Philadelphia ever saw. He never won the big one. And he's not going to win the big one either because Kansas City is going to lose to the San Francisco San Francisco 49ers. Even though neither of them is my team, I just don't want to see him win. In so many years, he was a loser in Philadelphia. And again, boo, boo, dirty, drunk Philly fan. Disgusting Philly fan. I don't know how they won. They they somehow beat the curse of Santa Claus, but that's a whole other that's trust that's a whole other issue. Uh, here so again, this was pretty good. Uh, Kip starts off really fast. He starts with a drop kick and a gut buster to Cody. Whoa! Uh, then then Kip, Kip goes on the outside. Cody throws him outside. Kip shoves Arn Anderson. Arn Anderson again. He has script going on. Penelope. Got, uh, um, got, got knocked. Uh, Cody got knocked into Penelope on the outside. That, that Jezebel. The way only Jr. can say it. And again, as Jr. plugs his barbecue sauce and other stuff that Jr. had, and, and mustard. Uh, so Penelope again. She does the heel thing. She fakes getting. Getting KO'd eventually, Kip Sabian does the splash onto Penelope, and Penelope goes on to Cody. And Penelope gets up, chuckles, laugh, and they have then Penelope Ford and Kip Sabian have a pretty cool makeout session. And um, the thing with this match is, is that there's way too many heel tropes. Again, you have Penelope acting hurt, and Cody's feeling, oh, I didn't mean to hurt you. Oh, then don't be at ringside, you Jezebel. But and then of course Kip Sabian was complaining about a knee, but again he did the springboard splash and said, "Ha ha ha ha, it's not really hurt." Uh, then there was, oh yeah, Cody's pretty good because C Cody again he he does this traditional um, kneeling kind of throat chop, is always good. Uh, Again, the, the, the ten fists, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And there's a very Dustin like power slam, which is always nice to see. Uh, Penelope Ford got a souvenir because Cody Rhodes took the weight belt out, and Penelope Ford took Cody's weight belt from him, which was pr pretty funny. So she got a souvenir, and when Cody went to pin Kip Sabian, she threw a shoe at him. And some lucky member of the crowd just got a Doc Martin as a souvenir because she threw that because she threw that. Arn Anderson said, "So listen, she threw the shoe in the ring. What are you going to do?" And the rest like, "I didn't see. It. Yeah, whatever." It's like Arn, you better get off the ringside. So, so Arn did like the baseball ump thing, like like chest bumped. Referee, referee said, "You're out of here." Um, and for that. <laughs> It just seemed like a baseball moment. And then Arn just like tossed his Doc Martin into the crowd. <laughs> I hope someone was paying attention to Cody. It's actually have a pretty thick heel. The only reason I can tell it's a Doc Martin is because that kind of like the little like signature tag at the bottom. And I'm sure Penelope Ford can afford many Doc Martins. Yeah. Um, it, it just was too much, I think. Uh, then they went to Kiss again. And Joey Janela shows up. And takes a kiss from both Penelope and Kip Sabian. And Kip Sabian's disgusted. And Joey Janela's like, yeah. And I don't know about the bad boy Joey Janela. We'll see. Probably the pay-per-view will be Kip Sabian versus Joey Janela. With hopefully a, a Penelope Ford in a shark cage match. Who knows? Um, and then, of course, eventually Cody again hit dives. The the there was some weird draping suplex that was pretty cool. It's just dives. That's kind of what AEW is becoming known for. If you're not on a boat, 
you're just going to dive on full. So he again hit the disaster kick, which always looks great. Had a, had a couple of crossroads onto Kip Sabian. That was a good match. It was okay. It was okay. It's just too much, though. It was a good cheeseburger match. Oh, I think the other funny thing is that that someone from the crowd once once Arn started getting involved. Spinebuster time, baby! So again, Arn Anderson has best spinebuster. Uh, then there was a Brick Baker promo. She's just now Bitch Baker. I, I don't even care what she says, even though people are liking it because it's giving her character. It's giving her go home character. Again, bitch Baker, because she just looked pissy that one day. It's like, dude, whatever. Uh, then there was, again, that was so funny. I like drunk hangman. And there's a new backstage announcer woman. I forget who she is, but I don't know if Dosh is around anymore. You never know. Um, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega they were conducting a little interview backstage, and then Drunk Hangman shows up with what looks like like, like whiskey on the rocks. Drunk Hangman's best hangman. So, yep, yeah, I made name plays for you too, in case you ever want it. Here. Probably closest I ever got to the belts for a while. Again, yeah, Hangman and Omega have the belts. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, let's see here. AEW. Oh, AEW did mention the passing of Kobe Bryant. I mentioned that. I made a little tribute to him. Something simple, just some pictures and some sad music. That's okay. Uh, then we had SCU. We are the best. SCU. Thinking on the hybrid too. Oh, I'll tell you what. Jack Evans is still the best talker in all of pro wrestling. He's... I almost want to say he's up there at Macho Man levels when he can just, like, say random stuff. And it sounds so good coming out of him. Um, and Helico, he's amazing. He's so tall. It starts off doing a lot of technical collegiate stuff, a float over. Awesome stuff. SCU, the, the chain tag team wrestling is great. I'll tell you what, don't take anything away from the hybrid, too, because they can do some darn good chain tag team wrestling themselves. Uh, of course. Every moment Jack Evan gets to put a cheap shot in, Jack Evan knows how to be a heel on a tag team. He gets in his cheap shots whenever he can. Again, Angelica will go distract the ref. He'll go pull out. Because Scorpius guy was getting beat up really by Jack Evans when he was on the outside a lot. Uh, Angelica would go distract Kazarian. Kazarian would come in the referee like, no, 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 you have to tag. And Angelica goes, yeah, yeah, ref, turn the ref around. Yeah, get him. And Jack Evans like like punching up. Punching and beating and choking and kicking. Uh, Scorpio Sky on the outside, driving Scorpio Sky into the barricade for I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Kukachu. Yeah, this was a fun match. Uh, Kazarian eventually does get the hot tag in, cleans house. Oh, let's see some of the moves. Uh, draping. We had the pancake, a cutter, a draping leg drop. That was awesome. Um, hybrid 2, they did the backdrop double stomp. Yep, they had I think it was Scorpio Sky up in a back body drop. That's what Angelico had. And then Jack Evans came down, did the, hit the double, double stomp. And then they fell to the ground. That was great. Uh, uh, Evans missed the, the Sasuke special. This is like a flippy thing over the rope. Um, then, of course, they, of course, SCU, Kazarian, and Scorpio Sky hit the SCU later. And SCU, SoCal Uncensored, wins. Oh, this was fun. This was a good surf and turf match. So let's see. I was at the limit of that file space. So let's get back here. Um, then Pac comes out. Pac's in like some dark park in Cleveland. If I was Pac, I would not be in a dark park in Cleveland. Because he would get jumped even though he was in his wrestling gear. 
Why would you be in a park in Cleveland in the winter time? In just your rest. People might actually leave him alone. Now that I think about that some more. That's okay. He says, Pock. He says, Moxley, I'm not done with you. I'm going to take your other eye out. Whoa. Threatening violence. In fact, that reminds me, I have to order that video game. Maybe when I get back. Use up one of my Christmas gifts. My Amazon gift card. The Phantom Pain. Because then I, oh, I have to do that So much to do tomorrow before work. Why am I so busy? No. For having supposedly a bunch of free time, freaking busy. But enough about that. And um, then we have a six-man six tag match to end the show. It was Private Party and Darby Allen taking on um, Hernandez, Ortiz, LAX, and Le Champion, Chris Jericho. Uh, Darby and Jericho start off. It was pretty good. Jericho. Stupid idiot. Cleveland, idiot. And then Darby Allen had enough of that. He he slapped Jericho back. Jericho said, "Okay, we've we've had fun." He tags out Hernandez Ortiz again. You have some amazing moves. I do love the matches. Um, Tony Schiavone. I forget what he said, but he was taking note of stuff. He's doing something. Uh, but again, you have the inverted atomic drop, the Jericho, the chops of the chops of Jericho were, were raining down. Again, the private party, they did the old school schoolboy takedown. That's good to see. Even though it only led to two, that's what it's supposed to do. They did the victory roll. They did rolls, but they weren't necessarily the surprise roll up there, like the victory roll. I forget which old school wrestler like pioneered the victory roll, but that was kind of like his finisher. So that's always cool to see. Um, Jericho to a springboard dropkick. It's great to see Jericho still has... You still got it! <laughs> always fun. Uh, he also went for the three amigos, except for the third time, it became a trade-off that laid vertical suplex. Which is always fun to see, because you're just like hanging there. The, the blood rushes to your head, and you don't know when you're going to fall. So that's always fun. Uh, Darby Allen got the hot tag. He just starts like flying all over the place. So fast. He's just amazing though. He gets the hot tag, beats up everyone. Um, eventually, chaos breaks down. And of course, when chaos breaks down, Jericho hit one, hit the Judas effect on one of the people, or private party, I forget who. LAX and Jericho pick up the win, and of course, they're not done yet. They're going to administer uh, a little beating to Private Party and, and Darby Allen. So this will be interesting. Uh, Mox comes out there with a baseball bat. Uh, Darby Allen gets whipped with the belt. And, of course, once John Moxley's out there with the baseball bat, you know what? It's a very trope thing. Hagar knows exactly what he's doing. He came up, arms up. I'm going to get you, Mox. So Mox went boom, right to the gut. Oh, the most devastating move. And it's probably the baseball bat is probably the let's see here, ring steps, ring post, turnbuckle covers. The fourth hardest object that, that that is in a professional wrestling. Actually, the fifth hardest. Because it would be steel steps, ring post, turnbuckle bolts. Yeah, and for some reason, someone like Nia Rose like tried to like expose the turnbuckle ropes, I uh, turnbuckle bolt, concrete floor. Yeah, that's up there. Barricade number five for a baseball bat is sixth hardest part of any wrestling ring. And I'll say what this match was fun though. It was a good surf and turf match. And that's that was AEW again a really good show. 
That women's division sucks, though. They have absolutely no clue what they're doing. I'm going to write this down. It's tomorrow's SmackDown. So I have to change that graphic because it's going to be a red wine and pizza SmackDown show. And I have to figure out how I'm going to change that graphic because I'm lazy. Uh, but overall, I'll tell you what, AEW, it was a cheeseburger show. Again, they have to figure out their women's division because their women's division sucks. Like, there's, there's no two ways about it. But again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Um, again, you can see all kind of the post-production credits. Well, my little TV set at the end.